Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're talking about a Final Cut Pro X quick tip on how to clone yourself. I've got an example of the final result and I'm going to go ahead and press play so you can see what it looks like. As you can see, I'm sitting on the couch, couch thumbing through some TV stations. I walk down. Oh, I see myself a little bit shocked, laughing. Haha. -ha. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, close QuickTime, right? I've got uh, Final Cut Pro open. And let me talk about what you need to do in order to pull off this trick. So first things first, when you're shooting this clip, you're going to want to make sure that your camera is locked down on a tripod. So obviously handheld camera movements, etc. that's not going to work so much for this. You could stabilize, etc. It's going to get pretty technical and not the route you want to take. So this, this shot is really best pulled off when the camera is on a tripod. Next, I have this shot uh, done continuously. So both pieces, the part me sitting on the couch and the part me walking down the stairs are shot on one uh, particular clip. That way there's not any changes in color, etc, etc. By pressing start and stop, you maybe you move the camera and so forth. So that's just something to take note of. I shot this in the Technicolor Cine, uh, Cine style um, picture style, which is pretty flat. So we can color correct it. And because this is one clip, we just bring it into our timeline by highlighting it and then pressing W on our keyboard. It drops, this, drops it into the timeline. We'll select it, we'll go over to the inspector, and inside the inspector we can make some corrections to the color. I'll go ahead and bring up the scopes by pressing here, show video scopes. When we do, we'll want to make sure that we're in our waveform, in our luma. This will help us give us an idea on how we should set our exposure. So when I click on that button there, we'll go into our exposures. This is not a tutorial on color correction, although I should probably do one one of these days. So I'm going to crank this up a little bit. I'm going to bring my blacks down till they're touching. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too much. Somewhere around there. You'll notice the whites are clipping up here. Well, that's two things. It's the soft box right here in the glass, and then it's also this window. So obviously, I could have done something to prevent both those things, but I didn't. I'm not so worried about it clipping. Again, this is for web output. If this was going to be for broadcast, I'd throw on a broadcast safe filter to fix my issue with clipping here. Next, you can come on over here to settings. You can switch on over to RGB parade, and this is how you can adjust your red, green, and blue colors. So if I found out maybe I introduce a couple uh, percent of blue at this particular point, it, it, when this was in full screen, that's what I thought. Now maybe it's a little bit to the left or right. I'm not going to worry about it too much, um, but I'm going to go ahead and close my uh, scopes by clicking here. When we do that, I'll switch back over and click on my audio pane. Because I didn't plan to record audio for this, I only have audio from the camera and I actually didn't really talk or anything. Um, I just did the reactions and so forth. Although the theory will still be the same if you have audio in your clip. Um, basically, you're just gonna use the audio from the spoken parts from each par part of the clip, cut everything out, throw some room tone underneath to make everything blend together. So now that we've color corrected this clip, I can go ahead and close my inspector for now. I'm going to drag my playhead over here and I'm just going to scrub through this. So as you can see, I come and I sit down on the couch as I'm sitting there. I have my reaction, etc. Then I go upstairs, I come down, I have my reaction, etc. Right? So it was planned out what was going to happen. I'll scrub back over here to the beginning to when I just basically sit down and look up at the camera. So real quick. In order to access your blade tool, you need to press B on your keyboard. In order to access your selection tool, you press A on your keyboard. Or you can come into your tools here. I'm not uh, doing a Final Cut tutorial here as far as the usage of the tools in the interface. I'm assuming you already know that. If you don't, I do have a tutorial on using Final Cut Pro in, inter, uh, in an overview or an introduction to Final Cut Pro X. Go ahead and watch that and uh, you should be comfortable. So I'll go ahead and press B. I'll cut right here. I'll remove this portion of my clip. I'm going to scrub through until I'm about to get up, which is probably, which is right there, right? So maybe somewhere here. I'm going to press B, cut it, switch back to my selection. I'll find the part where I'm just about to walk down, which is, whoops, I'm scrubbing the wrong way. <laughs> so it's right, come on, somewhere. Somewhere here, right? I'm going to select B. I'll cut it. I'm going to remove this portion. Now what I'm going to look for are my reactions. So over here, all of a sudden, I look, and then 
boom, there's where the reaction starts. So I'll start right there. I'm gonna select this clip, press M on my keyboard to create a marker. Next, I'm gonna come over from this clip and I'm gonna find a portion. There's where my reaction, somewhere around there, right? So I'll go ahead and select this clip, press M on my keyboard. Now when I drag this up, I can align those markers. You see how they aligned and I got that guide right there. Um, if I bring my playhead back, well, let's actually, let's, uh, let's cut this last portion that's not going to be used because we don't have overlapping material. If I bring my playhead here, we'll notice that I don't see myself below. Well, in order to do that, I have to select this top clip, go into the inspector, uh, select video, and I'm gonna scroll down until I see crop. I'm gonna move the right portion of the crop, and as I do, you'll see I reveal the clip underneath it because I'm cropping the right side of this top clip. Now you're gonna to wanna to drag this, and the reason I said that you wanna make sure your camera's locked down, if I drag this slider, you're gonna see there's some differences in color between this side and that side, and maybe more evident when my body is here. So then let me move this slider. And the reason that you can see um, some differences in color between both sides is because I have a light set up on this side and I have a light set up on this side, which you can obviously see in the mirror, right? Now, obviously if I, had, if I had room up here, maybe I'd light it so that there weren't any shadows and so forth, but I don't. But what I can do is I can align this crop to the geometry. So if I bring this over, and I think it was 1075 is what I used in the final output, it lines up with this uh, portion of the wooden wall right here before it transitions into the, um, the wallpaper. So that lines up perfect. And therefore, if I scroll back, I can go ahead and press spacebar and preview this. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You don't see any overlapping shadows or too much color changes, etc. Granted, in the wallpaper, you can see some of the shadow coming from this light here, but that's regardless of the fact that it's being cropped. Um, none of that's leaking onto the wood, so that makes it a little bit more convincing. These are some things to take note in the production process to make sure that this effect is a little more sellable, right? So you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't cross over yourself. If, for example, my arm went in front of this arm here, then it's not a simple crop right here. What I'd have to do is rotoscope myself out, and that's a lengthy and very technical process. So for something like this, you're gonna wanna make sure that there's no overlap, etc. The changes in light, you wanna make sure you light it as evenly as possible so shadow are not going from one side of the crop to the other, etc. Go ahead and experiment. But to further sell this, what I can do is I can add some grain on top of my footage. So if I come back on over here, I show my event browser, I have some film grain, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag this on top of both clips. Now you'll notice if I scroll up, it does not cover the length of um, it does not cover the length of both clips. So what I can do is highlight it, press option, and drag this over. Because this grain is animated, you uh, cannot extend it because this is actually a movie. I'll go ahead and select B on my keyboard. I'll come to the end and I'll cut this uh, extra fat off, if you will. I'll select it and press delete. Now if I select both pieces of grain, I can come over here into my inspector, scroll down to the bottom and change my blend mode to overlay. When I change it to overlay, we'll see at 100% opacity, that's way too much, right? So maybe if I drop this down to 30% or something to that effect, that's gonna look good for this particular clip. I can show you what a before and after looks like by selecting both of these, pressing V on my keyboard, which disables them, and V again to enable them. By adding grain on top of this, it's further adding that glue to make, sh make it look like there was no compositing, that these two clips existed um, at the same time. It was shot at the same time. This is my stump double. Definitely I'm better looking than him. <laughs> so uh, to add the fade out, all I did is I added a solid to the end. I animated the opacity of that solid. And of course I threw on the 40 TV um, little swatch right here. Um, besides that, guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the con uh, comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also have a Facebook channel. Go ahead and make sure you like us on there and share this video with your friends if you found it helpful. Thanks a lot, guys. Till next time, I'm out.